Hey everyone, this is Josh from Carney Media Group and the Music Tech Help Guy YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about music distribution and how to get your music released on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube Music, and other streaming and digital download platforms. A big thanks to Amuse for sponsoring today's video. Amuse is a record label and music distribution platform designed for independent music artists. With Amuse, you can sell and stream your music on all the major streaming platforms and collect royalties for your music sales and track your sales and royalties online at amuse.io or use the Amuse smartphone app. Best of all, it's completely free to release your music with Amuse and you keep 100% of your royalties and rights to your music. In this video, I'll give you a brief history of independent music distribution, and I'll give you a walkthrough of the entire process of releasing and distributing your own music with Amuse. I'll also show you how you can copyright your music to protect your sound recordings. Obviously, a lot of you guys are aspiring musicians, bands, and solo artists. I've even mixed and mastered some of your work. And if you're new to all of this, you might wonder how to get your music on streaming and download platforms, and also how do you go about collecting royalties on your music sales. So this can be a pretty scary and daunting task because you don't want to sign the rights to all of your music away, and you also don't want to accidentally end up with a distribution agreement where you're only receiving a portion of your streaming and sales royalties. So there's two parts to this. The first part is music distribution. So getting your music out there on all these different platforms. The second part is something that new music artists seem to forget about nowadays, copywriting and protecting your sound recordings. First, let's talk about music distribution and how it's evolved over the years. Prior to the year 2000, record labels typically would have a huge stake in music distribution for bands and artists. This meant that if you weren't signed to a label, you probably didn't have any sort of major distribution of your music whatsoever. This is because the primary form of distribution for music was physical media back then. CDs in the 90s and 2000s, tapes in the 80s and 90s, and vinyl before that. So physical media is expensive. I remember being a kid going into music stores and checking out CDs and tapes and spending like $15 or $20 on an album. That's completely unheard of nowadays. The music store has their overhead, the record label needs their cut, the distribution company needs their cut, and there's also overhead for the CD artwork, the printing, the replication, all of that. So what happens is there's all this overhead that's getting shaved off of the sale of an album, and then what's left for the artist at the end of the day is just a small fraction of what the album cost. And back then there were virtually no options for distribution for independent artists. So indie artists like my old band from college, distribution to us was just paying for the printing of the replication for the albums myself, and then just selling them at shows. Okay, so now that we've covered the basic history of indie music distribution, I'll walk you through the whole process of releasing your music with a muse, and I'll talk about some scenarios that you might run into along the way, like cover song licensing, ISRB codes, and how to acquire these things. So I've got a four song EP I wanna release, and to start, the bare minimum you're gonna to wanna to have is 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz wave files for your songs, and then your cover artwork. And you want your artwork to be at a pretty high resolution. It needs to be 3000 by 3000 pixels and no larger than 6000 by 6000. The artwork should also be free of anything other than the band or artist name and the name of the album, single, or EP. You don't want anything like website URLs or any advertising on it, just the artist name and then the project. Now, normally on this channel, I do a lot of Logic production tutorials, and when you finish mixing and mastering your songs, you wanna make sure to bounce or export your masters at a 16-bit bit depth and a sample rate of 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. Now, if you're not mixing and mastering your own music, just make sure to tell your engineer that you need 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz wave files for distribution, and he or she will know what you need. The interesting thing about this format is that it's the Redbook CD format from years and years ago, and even though we're not really mastering to CD much anymore, it's still the standard file format for submitting music for distribution. You can upload some compressed formats, like AAC files, for example, although I like to stick with WAVE or AIFF because they're completely uncompressed formats. 
Okay, so once you've created an Amuse account and confirmed your email address, you can create your release. With Amuse, you can do this from your computer at amuse.io, like I'm doing here, or you can actually download the Amuse app and you can actually release music straight from your phone. So I'll click Create Release. Here I'll need to type in some details about my release. The release name is the name of the single, EP, or album that you're releasing. Notice that it didn't ask for the band or artist name anywhere. It's because I actually typed that in earlier when I created my account. The label name is optional. I do everything through my company, Carney Media Group LLC. So I'll type that in. But if you're a completely independent artist, you can leave this blank. And essentially that means that you're your own label. So the band or artist name is effectively the label as well. And then you can choose the closest genre of your music and what language the release title is in, not the lyrics, the title of the release. You'll be able to choose the language of the lyrics of the songs later. Next, you'll upload your cover art. So I'll just drag and drop that in. Again, note the file type and size restrictions I talked about earlier. If you don't follow this format, your release can be rejected. Next, you'll upload the tracks for your release. So I'll just drag and drop in my 16-bit WAV files here. And after you drag them in, you can reorder them here if you need to. And then next, you're gonna to wanna to add some details for each song. So I'll click on my first track here and give the track a title. I know this should probably go without saying, but when you're doing this, just be really careful not to rush through things. Make sure you don't have any spelling errors, autocorrect errors, things like that. If you title something wrong, it's gonna be difficult to change it after the project has already been released. If there's multiple versions of a song, you can designate that here. Choose a recording year, the title language and the lyric language as well. Next, you can specify if the song has any explicit lyrics or if it's a clean version of an explicit song. You can choose whether the track is an original, a remix, or a cover song. I'll come back to cover song licensing in just a bit. This one's an original, but the second track on my EP is actually a cover. And then the ISRC code is the International Standard Recording Code. And what this is, is it's an international standard code for identifying sound recordings and music video recordings. So they use these to track plays and sales and royalties and things like that. It's essentially a unique identifier for your song. Now, if you leave this blank, Amuse will automatically assign your song's ISRC codes for free. So you don't have to go buy these beforehand if your project is all original music. However, if you have a cover song, a remix, or anything that needs any type of mechanical licensing, you may have to get the ISRCs first so that you can go get the mechanical licensing before releasing the project. So in my case, I actually bought ISRC codes for my songs in advance. I use ISRC.com. It's like $2 per code, and then they charge you a convenience fee. So for four songs, it ended up being like $38 US to get my ISRCs in advance. And it literally took less than 24 hours for them to be assigned. So I'll just copy and paste my ISRC for the song in here. Next up is the YouTube content ID section. What this does is it allows a muse to collect royalties on your behalf when people integrate your song or songs into their videos, or if they just straight up repost your song on YouTube. So let's say a popular YouTuber uses your music for background music, and you get several million views on the video. So he's most likely monetizing that video and making money from it through ad revenue. So what this does is it ensures that you get a cut of that ad revenue too, because he used your sound recording in his work. If you choose to not do this, you miss out on that. Now, if you're someone like me, so like you have a YouTube channel and you make money off of YouTube with advertising revenue like I do, if I decide to use one of my songs in a video like for demonstration or background music or whatever, my video might get flagged. And when I say flagged, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't mean like flagged for removal or demonetization. It's nothing like that. All this means is that YouTube has identified the song in the video that I own and instead of YouTube collecting the advertising revenue for me, the revenue will be shared between YouTube and Amuse. So in a nutshell, some of the mechanical royalties from the advertising revenue will come here to Amuse and they'll show up on my Amuse app rather than on YouTube, just for that video where my song was used, where I used my own song in my own video. So you're not actually losing any ad revenue that way, it's just getting split up. I used to use CD Baby back in the day for this, and I would avoid using my own music in videos because they would do the same thing, but they literally would take like half of my revenue from the YouTube video. Amuse doesn't do that. You keep 100% of your royalties, so that's really nice. 
And lastly, you can add any songwriters, featured artists, and contributors to the song. For this, it's just me, so I'll click save to finish up this song and move on to the next. My second track on the EP is a cover of Bringin' on the Heartbreak by Def Leppard. Again, this is the reason why I got the ISRC codes beforehand. So after I type in all the info for this track, I'll just select the cover song option, and it'll ask for your distribution licensor. I used tunelicensing.com for this. So after I got my ISRC code, I applied for a mechanical license for the song, and you can actually pay the licensing fees up front. However, it's not a forever or infinite license. You pay up front for an estimated number of downloads, and then they track those downloads on the licensing site. So I prepaid for 500 downloads of the cover song, and it only cost like $60 US. So it's not outrageously expensive or anything. You just wanna make sure you do things the right way and license things properly, so you don't end up in any legal trouble later. The same thing goes for songs that you sample or remix. You'll have to pay a mechanical licensing fee for those as well. So even if you just sampled a short clip or a beat from another song, you've gotta make sure to license it properly, otherwise you can end up in legal trouble later. And then just remember to put the original songwriters below before moving on. So off screen, I input the details for the rest of the tracks. My fourth track has some explicit language on it, so I made sure to mark it as explicit. Then I'll click next to move on to the delivery options. So here you can choose which stores and countries you want the release to be available in. If you're releasing a cover song and you didn't get proper licensing, this will severely limit the number of countries and stores that your release will be available in. But since I got my cover song license, I can choose all of the options for the stores and countries here. And then you can choose a proposed release date. When you release music independently, the release tends to pop up on different platforms at different times. So you may see it available on Spotify before you see it on iTunes, for example. So I'll just choose the soonest possible date. And then you can choose if the project is a re-release like if you made a CD with your band years ago, but you wanna re-release it for digital distribution, you can do that here too. This is a new release, so I'll choose no. And then you just confirm that you're ready to release your music. Now, while you're waiting for your music to be released, you can go download and log into the Amuse app and keep track of the status of your release. So right now, mine's showing that it's still in review, and then when it's live on stores, you'll get a notification of that. Once your music is live, you can track your sales and royalties right from your phone using the Amuse app. However, keep in mind that sales are typically gonna be delayed a few weeks. Just be patient, your sales are being collected and tracked, they're just not gonna show up immediately. All right, so that's how I release my music for free using Amuse. Next, let's talk about copywriting your music and the different types of copyright for musical works and sound recordings. In the U.S., you can copyright a song or a collection of songs online at the U.S. Copyright Office's online services website. So first, you'll head over to copyright.gov and click register here. And then what you can do is log into the eco registration system. If you haven't created a username and an account on here, you're going to want to do that first. And then after you log in, you'll be taken into the eco registration system here. So to register a new work, you go over here and click on the standard application, click start registration, and then for type of work, choose the sound recording option. Now there is a difference between a sound recording and a performing arts copyright. A performing arts copyright will cover a musical composition. So let's say you wrote a song or a musical composition and it hasn't been recorded yet, but you still want to protect your song or the rights to your song. Or maybe another artist is going to be performing your song and you're not actually gonna be making your own sound recording of it. So that's what that is. The good news about sound recording copyrights is that if it's an original composition and you've made the sound recording to it, it actually covers both of those things. It, it helps protect the musical composition and the sound recording. So I'm gonna go with that, click the checkbox to confirm, click continue. Now here what we have to do is enter in each of the song titles on the album or EP or a collection of songs. The thing that's tricky here is that if you have an album with different songwriters, what you're gonna have to do is actually file different individual claims. Like for instance, if you're releasing an eight song album and you wrote all eight of the songs, but your singer wrote lyrics for four of them, 
you're going to have to file two separate claims. So one claim where you're the sole claimant for four of the songs, and then the other four songs, both you and the singer will be claimants. The other thing that's tricky is because I have a cover song on my EP, I'm not going to be able to uh, register the cover song as part of this collection. I'm actually going to have to go back and register that separately. So you can copyright cover songs because you do own the sound recording, but someone else owns the composition. So you have to register it that way. So I'm going to leave Bring It On The Heartbreak off of this list. So I'll just click New. Title type will be title of work being registered, and I'll type in the name of the first track on the album. And then I'll add the other two. So the third track was called Needles and Pins. And the fourth track was called Live by the Knife. There we go. Because when we register these, the same author is going to be given for all three of these. Uh, author or authors. So it kind of has to be the same for each uh, copyright claim that you send in or case that's sent in. Has this work been published? I'm going to say no because uh, it has not been released yet. Year of completion is 2019. Click continue. And then this is your author. So you have to name the authors. So I'll just type in all my information. And there's this drop down menu that says, Is this author's contribution? Uh, a work made for hire. So this is if you're hired to work on a project, but you don't actually own any copyright for it. You're still listed as an author or a songwriter, but maybe you don't have any copyright control over the song. Like, for instance, I've had people hire me to help them with songwriting and arrangement. So their songs, I, I'm essentially a co-writer of the song, but they've already paid me up front for my work, so I'm not claiming any ownership of their song. So that's what work for hire means. I'm gonna say no, because there's only one writer and it's me. And this is the page where it's gonna matter for my cover song, and this is why I'll have to register the cover song separately. So it says, if the author created only the sound recording, check the box for sound recording. If the author contributed to both the sound recording and the recorded work, so the musical work and the recorded work, Check the box for sound recording, and in the other field, describe the author's contribution to the recorded work. For example, lyrics and music, or text, for example. So in the other box, I'm going to type lyrics and music. So I'm copywriting the sound recording as me as the main author, but I'm also being credited for the songwriting. If I were copywriting my cover song, I would leave this blank. And that's the really the only difference between... Um, copywriting the cover song and copywriting the other three songs, but you have to do them separately. You have to do them as two separate claims or cases. So here you have to identify the claimant of the work. So in this case, I'm the claimant because I'm the author of the work, but I'm also claiming copyright over the sound recording. So I'll go ahead and add my information in again. Okay, so I've typed in my information. I've got my address so I'll blurred out because I really don't want everyone to know where I live. But note, note there's a box here for organization. So it is possible for individuals to be authors, but an organization like a record label, for example, to have ownership of the sound recordings. Next up is the limitation of claim. This is only going to be used if your work contains or is based on previously registered material. If this is a new claim and doesn't contain any other material, you just Hit continue to move on. The next three sections have to do with who the Copyright Office can contact for rights and permissions, general correspondence, and where the certificate will be mailed. In this case, all three of those will just be me. Then there's a page on special handling. This is typically only used when there are legal proceedings involved, so I don't need that. After certifying that your claim is true, you can review your whole submission, and then click Add to Cart to pay the $55 fee to send in your claim. After you've paid, you'll be asked to upload your files. After the files are uploaded, you can click here to complete your copyright submission. So now it says that my claim submission has been completed, so I'm all done. So that's how I go about releasing, distributing, and copywriting my music. And again, a big thanks to Amuse for sponsoring this video. 
I know releasing your music can be really scary, especially if it's your first time, but Amuse makes it super easy, it's free, and it allows you to keep 100% of your rights and royalties. Check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you want to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash musictechhelpguy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.